Hi, this is Tommy's Piano Corner. I'm Tommy. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves playing the piano, to get the most out of this great hobby. Piano, I've often thought, is a lonely occupation. There's hours and hours and hours of hard work and really a limited audience for the output, to be honest with you. I'm a member of a piano technique discussion group on Facebook and one of the members posted a question about how to record yourself playing. And at first I thought, well, isn't it obvious? But then I got to thinking, and in actual fact, I'd done quite a lot of research when I did my Facebook video project, because I've recorded a few videos over the last year or so that I've uploaded to my Facebook page. And there was quite a learning curve to go through. In these next few videos, I'd like to help you get onto a fast track so you don't need to do all of this research that I had to do and learn some very simple techniques of how to be able to record yourself playing and share it with your family and friends. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. Maybe the first thing to think about is that when I learned to play all those years ago, the opportunities for playing for other people were relatively limited. Of course, you can always play for family and friends when they visit you at home. You can perhaps play in bars and pubs every now and then if there's a piano there, but not so, so often. There are other public performing things, if you like, that are probably less pleasurable, such as exams <laughs> that we all had to do. And then the other things really for me were things like church concerts, um, school concerts, and maybe the odd competition that I entered when I was young. However, in the modern day, there are many options for sharing the fruits of our labor. And these are the usual culprits of Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Back in the day, of course, most of us had access to cassette recorders, I guess. In my circle, at least, not really many of us had access to a video camera. I mean, I think years ago I recorded a version of Misty. Well, my brother recorded a version of Misty on a borrowed video camera that a friend of ours had lent to us. And I don't know what ever happened to that tape, but it's long gone now. Of course, these days, we all have video recorders in our pockets. And therefore, the, probably the most obvious thing to do is to use them to share our work. When I first thought about this video, I thought it would just be one simple video, or maybe five, ten minutes long. But I soon realized, in fact, as I said earlier, I'd learned quite a lot of different things. And to try and include them in one video would just be far, far, far too long. It would take hours and hours. I've split this down into a series of videos, and today's video is going to be the very first, most basic way of just adding a little bit of interest to your recordings. These devices now come with everything you need. There's a camera, there's a microphone, everything is there so that you simply press record and you're able to get a reasonable quality recording of yourself playing as simple as that. Here's an example where I did just that at Steinway Hall in London. I quite simply took the phone out of my pocket, I propped it up against the end of the piano just so it was there near my left hand, I pressed record and off I went. Once I actually did the same at home on my digital piano. I just propped the phone up against it, pressed record and played along to see how it sounded.
I think these are perfectly serviceable recordings to load up onto Facebook so that your friends and family can listen to you play. No need to do anything more complex. However, still using just the phone in your pocket for very little extra effort, you can actually produce something that's just that little bit better. What I'm really talking about here is doing some very simple video editing on your phone. I'm an iPhone user, so for me it's iMovie. If you use Android, there are plenty of other options available that all do pretty much the same things. So let's have a really quick look at some of the kind of things that we could actually do here. First, we open iMovie. We click on Projects at the top of the screen. And from here, we select the plus sign. Then we select Movie. And now we simply add the video that we've just filmed to this project. If you filmed it a while ago, you'll need to scroll up and down to find it, of course, but it won't take you long. Then click Create Movie at the bottom. A new screen appears, so let's take a few moments to look at this screen. In the bottom portion here, we have what's called the timeline. This is basically where the video that you've shot is going to be. You can scrub, this is what the professionals call it, through this simply by swiping with your finger to find specific places within the recording that you're interested in. If you want to be reminded whilst you're using it, there's a little help button here. When you have it selected, it highlights in yellow, as you can see, and it gives you on-screen prompts to show you what things are meant to do, which can be helpful. If you look carefully, you'll see there's a vertical line that goes through this timeline. This is called the playhead. So this is basically the point from which the movie will play if you click on play. And it's also the point in the movie that's visible in this larger area above. In fact, to top and tail our recordings, there's actually very, very little that we need to do. First, let's get rid of the bit at the beginning where we are pressing record and then getting ready to play. Who wants to see that little bit? And then we can also get rid of the bit at the end where we're getting up or reaching over to press stop. This couldn't really be simpler. By scrubbing slowly through the first part, we can find the point at which we want to start our recording, or we want the playback of our recording to start, is probably a better way to put it. Once the playhead is in the right place, you can either click on split or swipe down with your finger. What then happens is that iMovie cuts the clip at the point you've selected. To get rid of the bit we don't want, simply select that piece like this, then press delete, and it's gone. We then do the same thing at the end. We find the place where we want the playback to stop. We select the clip, split it again, and then delete the bit we don't need. Already, this is looking much more professional, don't you think? How about now telling our friends what the music is? Quite often they won't be familiar with the piece that we play, so we can do this by adding simple titles, just like on a TV show. Again, this is really easy to do. A top trick here to remember is that in iMovie on your phone, the titles will display for the entire duration of a clip. So if you only want them at the beginning, you're going to need to split the clip at the point you want the title to disappear. Don't worry, when you play it back, you'll never be able to tell that it has been split. We then select the first bit of the clip where we want the title to be shown. We press the T. You'll then see a range of different options for different types of titles. Simply select the one you want, add your title, nothing more to do. If you wanted, you could add one at the end using exactly the same approach we've just used here. Now that
that we've added our titles, let's just add a tiny final flourish to make it perfect. So what we'll do now is we'll click on the cog to access the project settings. Here we can add a filter. So for example, you might want to have the movie in black and white for that retro feel. If you do, click on B&W and it's all done. Have a play with the different options here. To be honest, I've never really bothered doing it, but I'm sure it could look quite good depending on the music that you're trying to record. The next thing you can do is to choose a theme. These can be interesting to do sometimes and worth having a play if you have the time. You don't actually see the impact of the theme until you export the video, so don't be worried if you don't see it when you're playing it back from within the project itself. The last thing we can do is fade in from black and out to black. It makes the video that little bit smoother and less abrupt than something suddenly appearing on the screen and then something suddenly disappearing. To be honest, this is really just the start of what you can do in iMovie. If you want to explore further, there are lots of great iMovie tutorials on YouTube to choose from. But it just goes to show what can be done with nothing more than what you carry around in your pocket. All that's left to do now is simply upload it to Facebook or save it to your camera roll. To do this, we press done, which takes us back to the list of projects. We click on the project we want and we press the little share icon at the bottom and off we go. Really couldn't be simpler. I hope you found this video interesting. And I hope that it's given you some ideas of how you can start to share your work with your friends and family. In next week's video, I'd like to show you how you can take this even further by effectively turning your iPhone or your Android phone into a powerful recording device so that you can get much better audio quality. If you're not already, please do remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll be informed when the next videos are released. Thanks very much for watching.